During the 19th century, many in Ireland sought to achieve independence and took part in numerous rebellions, like the Young Ireland Rebellion of 1848 and the Fenian Risings of the 1860s. But more were involved in groups like the Home Rule League, which hoped to establish an Irish Parliament. And nationalistic sentiment grew thanks to the social efforts of groups like the Gaelic League, which promoted Irish culture and language but attempts to pass Home Rule bills through Parliament in the late 19th century were thwarted. However, in 1912, a third Home Rule bill was set to pass through Parliament, but this was met with opposition from Protestants from within Ireland. Not wanting a Catholic-dominated Parliament of their own, they formed a militia, the Ulster Volunteers. So, in response, the Catholic formed their own militias, the Irish Volunteers, in 1913. But the Irish Republican Brotherhood secretly funded and infiltrated this militia. So, believing the British Army would not help enforce Home Rule, they began to import arms, like during the Howth gun running of 1914. Meanwhile, in Dublin, employers hoping to end the growing unionisation of workers staged a lockout, leaving thousands out of work. And these workers, with the backing of trade unions from elsewhere, formed another militia, the Irish Citizen Army. So, a civil war seemed imminent, but then World War I broke out, and the Home Rule Bill was postponed until the end of the war. However, leaders of the secret Irish Republican Brotherhood met in September 1914 and still planned an uprising, hoping to receive German backing. Plus, the prominent humanitarian activist Roger Casement met with the Germans, hoping they'd send an expeditionary force and create an Irish brigade out of prisoners of war. The Germans, however, only agreed to send arms, and only a few dozen men volunteered to join this Irish brigade. Plus, the IRB had established a headquarters staff of Clark, McDermott, Plunkett, Pierce, McDonough and Kant. Plus, there was also James Connolly, the head of the trade union-backed Irish Citizen Army. And as Pierce was director of organisation within the Irish Volunteers, they had successfully infiltrated this militia, challenging the leadership of Ewan McNeil. Then finally, in 1916, building up to Easter week, the group began to mobilise. Pierce ordered the Volunteers hold parades and exercises, while on the 9th of April, the Germans sent 20,000 rifles to Ireland. And on the 19th, they gave a forged letter to McNeil, purporting to be British plans to arrest him. However, McNeil soon learned of the planned uprising and tried to stop it. However, now it was planned to take place on Easter Sunday. But the British had been intercepting German messages and knew of the shipment and the date of the planned rising. So they scuttled the German ship with all the rifles and arrested Casement. On news of hearing the lost shipment of arms, McNeil stopped all volunteers meeting on Easter Sunday. But the leaders of the rising just postponed the uprising until the next day. This delay and contradictory orders meant far fewer people took part in the rising, only 1,200. But nevertheless, on the 24th, from the General Post Office, Pierce was proclaimed President of the New Republic. And as the Republic was declared, many locals joined in with the rising, however many who had family members fighting for the British in the trenches opposed this rising. Elsewhere, only small-scale fighting took place, like in the countryside of Galway and in Fingal, where they launched guerrilla attacks. But rebels did manage to capture Ennis Gorthin. In Dublin, however, the British could only put up very little resistance on the first day, but soon declared martial law and quickly retook key points like City Hall. And they secured the ports and railway stations, allowing them to bring in thousands of reinforcements. Plus, the British had field artillery, and on Wednesday they began shelling the city as fighting continued in the streets for the next few days. But after Connolly had been shot and Pierce was forced to flee the shelled post office, he surrendered on the Saturday. Nearly 500 died during the rising, most of which were civilians killed by British machine guns and shelling, but there were instances of the British killing people out of anger. British General Maxwell then arrested over 3,000 people and illegally tried many without defence. He then proceeded to execute the condemned, including the initial leaders of the rising. But these executions enraged the population, and as they continued, many locals who opposed the rebels began to see them as heroes. So Prime Minister Asquith ordered the executions to stop. But over 1,000 men remained in internment camps where many like Michael Collins planned the next uprising. Plus, one notable rebel, Eamon de Valera, managed to escape execution largely because he was born in America. And these men helped lead Ireland to independence shortly afterwards. And these wars resulted in the division of Ireland into Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And you can find out more about the differences and similarities between these respective places by going over to Mr. Beat's channel as he's just released a video on the topic.